Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Today we are going to be ranking a total of 18 8 Princes units from the 8 Princes DLC. Now the 8 Princes DLC was the first DLC for Total War 3 Kingdoms, and in the patch that followed its release, there were many new units that we now associate with the main game, such as the Cataphracts, that were actually introduced as part of the 8 Princes DLC patch. And since we have covered many of those units already in our other tier list, which you can find in the link in the description below, I will not be including those in this tier list ranking. Rather, this list of 18 units here will contain faction unique units for all of the eight, eight princes factions, and two units that are unique to the eight princes 291 start in the Dull Swords Guard and the Dull Sword Guard Cavalry. For those of you who are interested, Dull is just a Chinese word for saber, so there is nothing too crazy about these units, but since they are unique additions to the game for this DLC, we will include them in this tier list as well. And aside from these unique additions, we also have a few returning faces as they are some faction unique units that are shared among other factions from the main game, such as the infantry of Jin for Sima Ai and the three Qiang cavalry units for Sima Ying. So now that we have established the scope of this tier list, we're going to once again pop into a custom battle to first conduct an overview of all these units first before coming back here to rank them all. So let's hop into game. Alrighty, so here we are inside a custom battle, and because there are eight princes, we're going to be doing this in two sittings, starting with this group of four right here. And the good thing about comparing these eight princes unit is that there is usually a Hun counterpart that we can compare them to. So we're going to take a look at that, starting with the two generic ones that are not faction unique, and they are the Dull Swords Guard and the Dull Sword Guard Cavalry. So right off the bat, here we have the Dull Sword Guard. If we take a close look, they look really like Jian Sword Guard, and Jian once again is another Chinese word for sword. And in this case, Dull is a saber variant, and you can kind of tell in their weapon, you have one straight edge with a curved edge on the other side. This is a pretty standard Dull. Whereas the Jian would have two straight edges. You have the same wonky shield that's on the Jian Sword Guard. But unlike the Jian Sword Guard, their closest comparisons actually to the Saber Infantry, which is no surprise as Dull is another word for Saber. So, stat wise, they look fairly standard. You have 83 charge, which is decently high for a melee unit. It's not super high, but decent. You have the standard health, pretty standard morale, and then here we have a pretty fast attack rate of 30. Now this is thanks to the fact they use a one-handed weapon with shield. And the attack damage is actually quite high, 28 and 14. Defensively speaking, they're not too shabby either. 30% evasion base, 20% additional granted by their shield, 26% armor, which is not very heavy. And you get 10% additional armor on the shield. 55% range block chance, which can be expanded, of course, by the shield wall formation by another 35%, boosting that to 90%. And in addition to that, they have access to circle, 43 speed. So pretty bland unit overall. But how does they compare? Well, in terms of stats, if we compare them to the Saber Infantry, right off the bat, you might notice a few things. They have slightly higher morale. 41 versus 36. We can do the direct comparison if we want. So here we see it. The ones on the right are the Dull unit. The ones on the left are the standard Han Saber units. So it wins a little bit in terms of morale. It loses by a huge chunk in terms of melee charge, about 25 points, which is roughly about 25%-ish of the total stat that's on the Saber infantry. But these Dull units do have increased attack. So same attack speed, but five extra base damage and two extra armor piercing damage. So that will all help. And defensively speaking, it has less evasion and less armor compared to the saber units. And in terms of the shield, the shield is a little bit better quality. So in terms of armor, it does carry that difference back by about 8% because of the shield. So if you're fighting directly front to front melee fights where you're not getting flanked, where your shield armor is being applied, and you're also not fighting against the axe unit, you will have 
more total armor compared to the saber infantry. But as a unit, without considering the shield effect itself, it has much less、um, armor in the actual stats. And in terms of range block chance, it lacks about five percent, which is not too significant. But if you add on the shield effect of the shield wall, these would be at ninety-five percent, which is as high as you can get it, while letting the enemy archers shoot you. Well, these will be at ninety percent. Now, so it gives and takes in a few places, but overall, the issue with the dull sword guard here is that they cost fifteen percent more. Than the saber infantry, they do do about almost twenty percent more damage. Not quite there, but they have a lot less charge and also less defensive stats overall. If you consider the evasion stat in there as well, so I would say it's slightly worse, definitely worse value compared to the infantry version. And even in the eight princes, you still have access to saber infantry. So unless you prefer the looks of these units versus these, you can see they use almost identical sword. Just really the shield difference and slight armor variation. It's much more economical to go for the saber infantry here. In addition to them, we have their cavalry version, the dull sword guard cavalry versus the saber cavalry once again. And just taking a look at this unit, you can see they're pretty much the infantry on the horse. If we just compare their stats, you can see identical stats on attack speed, on the attack damages. You do have more evasion on the infantry unit, which makes sense because you can't dodge attacks very well on horseback. But the armor is identical. They are, however, using a different shield. They're using more traditional shield compared to this one right here. This one's sort of the jian. Infantry shield, whereas they are all using the saber shield, and that's going to be reflected on the shield armor difference, and that's about it. The base armor the units are wearing and the look is the same exact one. They have obviously higher range block chance, but that's thanks to the fact they're being commanded by another commander general. Therefore, they get the 20% bonus from the nobility skill. They get higher speed, 94, which is great,、uh, but it's unfair to compare infantry to a cavalry in that respect. So let's compare them instead to the saber cavalry, and you can see here speed is the same, range block chance is the same, the shield is identical, the weapon has the same exact difference at what we've seen for the infantry. So about 20% more attack, a little bit less than 20, but close to it. And then you also have the difference in terms of the evasion. These dull sword guards actually outperform the saber variety in terms of armor and evasion. So unlike the infantry, they have better defense and better attack. Where they lose out on, and I can argue that it's a big area, is they lose out on the charge bonus. They have 146. These have 179, and these also have higher morale. So depending on how you value your cavalry. If you're just utilizing them as defensive sponges, which in this case it's a very viable option given they are a melee cavalry, then perhaps you want to go with the dull sword guard with slightly better sustained damage and very、uh, higher evasion as well. So if you mix up the cavalry once the enemy charge, or if you just want to use them to stand there take arrows, they will do just fine. And the cost difference here is a lot less than the difference there. Whereas the infantry has a 15% cost difference, the cost difference between these two units is only 10 upkeep per turn, with the dull unit being slightly more expensive. So I think value-wise, the difference between these two units are much more narrow compared to the difference between these two units. Although I would still argue, since they are a cavalry unit, you might as well take the extra charge bonus, which is the main driving force behind a lot of the cavalry damage. And that's all the generic unit we're going to talk about as we move on to faction unique unit, starting with Sima Yue. So Sima Yue here have two very unique units. So these are units that's not very easy to find a copy of, and that is the Shu Raiders and the Warriors of Shu. Like many of the unique names on a lot of unique units in the game, Shu refers to the Shu Province, so it's a location name. And this is definitely a light version versus a heavy version. 
The light version here is an axe unit with shield. They are one of the few axe infantry in the game. And they have access to similar formations to most melee infantry with shield wall and circle. 55% range block chance, 48 speed, pretty low armor. The attack damage is actually quite nice with 30 points in armor piercing and 9 in base. So total 39 with almost all of it in armor piercing, that's very good. 30 attack speed is very good and very high melee charge bonus. 143 is very high for melee infantry. As a reminder, these Dull Sword Guard Cavalry only have 146. They have 143. Now this is thanks to the fact they wear very little armor, so 20%, which helps uh, increase their melee charge bonus, whereas their heavier counterpart, you would think they would maintain that high melee charge, but unfortunately goes down to 120, which is actually a bit sad. And you can see that's reflected in their lower speed because they're using heavier armor. But the heavier armor, it's really only 12% difference. And the evasion boost is about 16%. Same exact weapon, 4 points of extra morale. But what's unique here is you get 35, or you get 10 more points of melee evasion. And if you tack on the 35, getting ahead of myself, you can boost it to 100%. But I can make an argument here that this 100% is not the same as the turtle 100% it actually makes the unit worse so how range block chance work is that you your shield must be facing the source of the range damage in this case if this unit is in this shield wall it has exactly a hundred percent range block chance enemy archer infantry or archer units horseback doesn't matter what will no longer shoot at this unit it will no longer be a target so you might think we can move this unit up like a turtle unit. We can. But the second this unit is sideways to a source of a tower, interior tower inside a town, these units will get shot and killed. Because range block chance is only applied in the direction of the shield. So this doesn't work as well as turtle. Turtle is 360 degrees of shield. There is no weak side. There's three weak side here. You can see there's no, no shield here. And there's no shield here it's only front you can obviously place this unit directly in front of a tower you're trying to absorb the damage from so that other units can sneak past that will work just fine but you can't maintain this against enemy archers if you're protecting your own archers behind because then the enemy archer will just walk up a little bit more and shoot at your archers and that defeats the purpose of your front line so this formation is actually kind of bad when their range block chance is exactly a 65. Whereas these units with the same formation will have exactly 90%. Now, obviously that's not as good as 95, but it's better than not getting shot at. That's not doing your job. And you don't have turtle to maintain the 360 degrees. So it's not great. And for these two units, they're wonderful because the comparison unit that I have is the yellow dragon. If you look at the yellow dragon damage, 39, 31 versus 39, 30, it's identical. They're using the same exact axe. The shield is obviously slightly different. Their base defense is actually 65%. It's just the yellow dragon's really messy. If you put them on a commander general, they take advantage of the nobility skill in game as well. So the game is kind of treating them like melee cavalry and they get the extra 20%. So that's why it's saying 85. But really they're having the same as these unit and they have outstanding charge, 285. The charge on these two raiders at 143 is very good. So this is a very good unit. It can serve as melee infantry for defense. You can pick up charge negation if you have the right general for it. And in addition to all the stats, it causes scare, it's discipline, immune to terror. It has the raider ability so it can set fires to towns if you want to. So they can actually counter towers. You can walk up to a tower with this formation, let it sit underneath the tower. It will light it ablaze. Very useful. And obviously, because they're axe unit, they can break down enemy shields. Very, very good unit. And that's everything that Sima Yue has to offer as we move on to Sima Jiong. So Sima Jiong here has also two unique unit and they are the Qi Guardsmen and the Qi Crossbow. Oh, for those of you who don't know where Xu Province is, it's around Pengcheng area, Xiapi. 
uh, where Taotian starts out in the game. That area is the Xu province. This army is called Qi Guardsmen and Qi Crossbowmen, also location based. And Qi is in the Shandong Peninsula. So you're looking at Beihai and Donglai, they're neighbors. Very close. Also named after a region of land. Qi wasn't actually a province name by the time of the Han Dynasty. So Qi and Lu were both part of what's called Qingzhou or the Qing province. Uh, but those two pieces of um, land used to be kingdoms and the Qi was one of them and Lu is one of them. Regardless, we have two units that also have a very close counterpart. So let's start with these Qi Guardsmen. They look like Qi Infantry and their counterpart is the Heavy Qi Infantry. They're almost clones. Let's take a look at how close they are. Two points difference in morale. Heavy difference in melee evasion. And one point difference in armor piercing damage. That's how close they are. Now, your unit are the ones with better melee evasion. So, the T Guardsmen are units with higher melee evasion than heavy T infantry by about 17%. And that's it. That's the difference between these two units. And for that big advantage of 17% melee evasion, you're paying 45 more upkeep and have the flexibility of recruiting these units on any general because heavy D infantry is only available on champions, but faction unique unit can be recruited on any class. So I guess it's better, but you can pretty much take what I think about heavy D infantry and apply to these with some minor adjustment because they require reforms and there's better poem units you can recruit and obviously there's better poem units you can recruit but maybe you want a poem unit on a different general class then it gives them slightly more value but that's about it then we have the t crossbowmen and once again we have a very close comparison to the heavy crossbowmen so let's take a look big difference in morale your unique unit has a lot more morale but i would argue a lot of that morale is because we are recruiting this unit currently on a commander who has high authority, whereas the sample that we're using for the heavy crossbowmen, I placed him on Sima Ying, because Sima Ying is actually a strategist. You can't recruit heavy crossbowmen on a commander class, so that's why you have lower morale there. The difference is actually slightly less. Now the health difference is real. There is a 4k health difference, but if you divide the 4k into 120 units it's actually almost nothing uh, but you are paying for a tankier unit same charge same weapon same damage same evasion same armor same range block chance attack rates a big difference the t crossbow unit shoot a lot faster than heavy crossbowmen for a crossbow unit 13 is very respectable firing rate very very respectable that's the speed of an archer unit so for a crossbow unit to have that speed that's really high. Damage. You have lower melee base da uh, range base damage, but higher armor piercing. So that is a small difference, but I actually think what's happening here is they're getting a boost of their base range damage on the strategist skill tree, whereas they're not getting it on the commander skill tree. Because I believe their weapon's actually identical. So they should have the same exact damage profile if you have them on the same general. So same unit with higher morale, slightly higher health, and a lot higher firing rate. And the firing rate does matter. And also they have higher speed, even though they have the same exact armor. So that's actually making me think the speed is getting the bonus from the mobility skill on the commander. So they would have identical speed because they're wearing the same armor. So the only difference between these two units is better firing rate. And that's a huge difference for crossbow units. And once again, you don't need any rank requirements. I guess you do. It's not free. I think it's rank 3. These are rank 6 because they're the heavy unit. Only available on strategists, whereas you can recruit these on any unit, on any general. But you probably still want to recruit them on strategists. And uh, they're better than the standard crossbow and heavy crossbow. And you might actually want to upgrade to them compared to the standard crossbow unit because we tend to avoid heavy crossbow units in the past. Um, range wise, same exact range, 220, nothing special here. 
So that's the unique unit for Sima Jiong. And moving on, we have Sima Liang. So Sima Liang here is interesting because he has a unit that eventually brought us the Imperial units. Because remember, Imperial units were added into the game during the patch where Mandave Heaven was launched. And this is a Princess, the very first DLC. And in this DLC, what he got was this unit called the Imperial Guards. And of course, their comparison is to the Imperial Sword Guard, which they look almost exactly alike. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. A little bit different texture on the helmet, but that's about it. Uh, Stat-wise, they're not alike. So this is not the case where the T Crosswoman and the Heavy Crosswoman had the exact same stats. They have different stats, even though they look almost identical. So morale-wise, you have higher morale, you have so much less charge. 120 less charge is a big deal. You also lose out a little bit on attack speed. Your damage is also lower in terms of armor piercing, but higher in terms of base. So overall damage is actually less. If you factor in the armor piercing portion, you have much less evasion. The rest is the same. The speed difference is once accounted for by the mobility skill. And the key difference here is also extended to the fact where Imperial units have the 15% replenishment penalty, they do not. But Imperial units also have the Solidarity skill, which means if you have multiple ones of these, they will give additional morale, additional melee evasion, and additional armor piercing boost. Price-wise, um, the Imperial Guard is not as expensive as the Imperial units, but they are still very, very expensive. So it's not like they're cheap and a good deal. Uh, but when you play as the A Princess, they're the best infantry unit you can get. So it's still great, um, but it serves the same exact purpose as these units. Um, I guess there is one additional difference that we have to note, that these units actually have access to Turtle, whereas it was not given to the Imperial Imperial Sword uh, Guard. So Turtle is always very valuable, and it's nice to see that you can get them on Smileout. But unfortunately for Smileout, that's the only actually a unique unit that you have. So that's it. And then we move on to Sima Ying, who actually have three very familiar units. Uh, they are the Tiang units. Tiang Hunters, Tiang Marauders, and Tiang Raiders. We talked about these units quite a bit in our Faction Unique Unit Guide when we talked about Ma Teng's units, because they are Ma Teng's unique unit. Tiang is a nomadic tribe that's in the western parts of China, and they have one specialty. They are fatigue immune. All three of these units are fatigue immune. And that by itself makes them super strong because you can loop forever. But in addition to that, look at the town hunters. 250 range. So the same exact range as an Onyx Dragon. Look at the damage. 60 base, 25 range. Uh, armor piercing. So crazy high. 60 attack speed. 100 ammo. Like, this is the dream unit. You kite forever, you harass, you deal tremendous harass damage. And then when you run out of 100 ammo, you have decent charge as well. That's just nuts. This, this unit is nuts. And then, moving on, we have a shock version with much higher melee charge, obviously. Armor piercing damage, off the charts. So, very high damage, great at killing generals. Decent speed, decent armor, those doesn't matter. You're using this unit because it never gets tired. Then moving on, we have the Tiang Raiders. This is your melee cavalry variation. You have potential to get it to 85% if you have it on commander, which you can, because all faction unique unit can be on any general class. And then you have the same setup with really good charge for a melee cavalry, because we've seen a couple melee cavalry already, 146. 179, 229, you know, just casually high charge and also never gets tired. So these are the town units and that's going to wrap it up for these four generals as we'll move on now to the next four princes. So see you guys there. Alrighty, so we're back here with another set of princes here starting with Sima Ai and he has two unique unit. First off, we have Infantry of Jin. Now this is the same exact unit that Liu Bell has. And the closest comparison to a regular Han unit would be the Spear Guard. They have very similar stats. Uh, it's a little bit higher on Infantry Zin in terms of attack. 
but the unit's designed to be a defensive shield for your units, so the attack part is actually not that important. Also very low charge, extremely high morale to stand still here with 55% range block chance, which can be increased by 15% through the shield wall with the spears or with turtle, all very useful. And they have decent amount of armor. If you compare the two, it's higher than spear guard, so they're just better versions of the spear guard. Very good unit on Sima'ai. And then we have Archers of Jin. So this is a new unit. There is no direct unit that Liu Bao has in the regular campaign. And these guys really are the same as the E Marksmen. So let's take a look at these guys right here. They have 50 attack base, 29 armor piercing, 17 firing rate. All very good stats. 36 ammo is a bit low, but then again, we are recruiting him on a champion right now. If we compare that to a E Marksman, which is Liu Bei's faction unique unit from the base game, what we see is the same damage, same range uh, attack rate, and extra ammo, but that's mainly due to Zhuge Liang commanding this unit, same range. So they're pretty much clones of each other. If we take a look at their other stats that are not that relevant, uh, we can see that the E Marksman being a level 6 required unit, these are level 3, um, have more morale, have more charge, have more health, and they have slightly less attack though. You have the 2812 on these unit, whereas the other unit have the 2310. It's a very similar situation to the dull units and the saber units that we saw. So it seems like the technology for sabers improve during the Jin Dynasty. And we get this 28-12 split on the sabers or dalt, and the regular Han units still use the regular saber infantry weapon. So 23 and 10 is the split on those, and that's represented here as well as on the dalt infantry. Now the melee evasion of the marksmen is way higher, but they have the same armor. And other than that, there's not too much difference between the two units. Both of them have the ability to fire while moving, so that's why we know they're pretty much clones of each other. And there's a lot of these cloning situations in the Eight Princes. It wasn't a very well-received DLC for such reasons. And then moving on, we have Sima Wei's uh, units. He has two as well. So the first unit is the Chu Spearman. Now Chu here represents a region as well. It's near Jin actually. If Jin is a province, Chu is a region near the Jin province. And that's why Liu Bao's kingdom is the kingdom of Chu. And Chu Spearman here has a very easy comp in terms of damage, but not so much for the armor portion. They are a spear unit. They're not a Z unit. So the comp is actually spear warriors who have the same exact damage. So if you take a look at the attack speed, the base damage, the 44 armor piercing, that's exactly the same. These heavier versions have way more armor. So 42 here and 63 here. And these have slightly higher charge and slightly higher morale. So it's actually quite disappointing that these heavily armored unit, the best comp for them is basically a very basic spear warrior. And that's also a case of why we have mentioned in the regular tier list for the Han units that Spear Warriors are actually pretty decent. Um, the difference of 20% armor is pretty much something that's separate between these two units. They have access to the same exact formations, and there's not too much that's special about these units. Then moving on, we have True Infantry, which are doll units that do not have a shield. So the comp is actually a mix between a dull swordsman and a saber infantry from the base game. And what you want to do with that mix is take away the shield and you have the true infantry. And what I mean by the mix is in terms of weapon damage, you have the 28-12 split, which is the dull. We mentioned all the Jin units have this better version of the saber. But in terms of charge, it has the charge bonus that's closer, or actually it's actually way higher, but it's way too low on the dull swordsman, but for the saber it has a similar type of higher charge. So it's a high charge version of the dull swordsman without the shield, with better armor, 53%, 45% armor uh, melee evasion. It's quite high, uh, and because you don't have a shield, you also don't have the shield wall formation. 
So defensively speaking, these guys are great in melee, but terrible against range. So you have to utilize them with that in mind, um, which is not a great news. Now compared to Yuan Shu's unit, which we didn't feature here, um, they're way better. They're way better than Yuan Shu's Rapid Tiger uh, units or the Warriors of the left because of the high armor and the higher damage on the weapon. But they have the same weakness in that they are bad against range. Then moving on, we finally have some stronger units. Uh, Sima Yun. Sima Yun has two unique units. One is the Xianbei Riders. Xianbei is also a nomadic tribe. They are mainly in northeast China. And they are quite known here in the game as these fatigue resistant units. So they're not fatigue immune. They all come with resistant to fatigue. So it takes a lot longer for them to get tired, but they will still get tired. Uh, but regardless, they're quite an interesting unit. You have very high charge on the shock cavalry version, very good damage, and decent amount of speed. The closest comp for this unit is actually Lance Cavalry. And I say that with a little bit of disappointment because if we compare, look at the difference. Four points of morale, four points higher, and 17% evasion. And that's it. And what's really separating these two units, aside from that little bit of evasion, is the fact that you get resistant to fatigue and guerrilla deployment that comes with the unit. And that's it. There's nothing else that's special about them. If you can get skills on your vanguard, you can gift those two traits to your lance cavalry as well. So not a big improvement between these units. Very comparable. Now of course, Sanbei Riders being unique do not require reforms and also can be recruited by all classes, which is something you can't say about the lance cavalry. So there are advantages that goes beyond just specialty in terms of resistant to fatigue, but still, that is the main difference in terms of stats uh, between these two units. Charge is a little bit higher, but not much. Then we have a Senbei Horse Archer. So these are your Horse Archer unit, and once again, if we click them and compare them to regular Horse Archers, you see that 5 points of morale is the only thing that separates these two units. And in addition to those five points of morale, of course, we're resistant to fatigue because of course that's a big deal. Not really, being sarcastic there. Um, so these Senbei units, which are also found in the base game, they're found in the bandits roster. You can get them from certain reforms on the bandit network, uh, are basically just copies of the Lance Cavalry and the Mountain Archer with very slight stat boosts, mainly in morale, and then resistant to fatigue. And that's it. Then we have some actually unique cavalry units, and they're led by Sima Lun. And Sima Lun have the Xiongnu version. Xiongnu is obviously a very famous nomadic tribe that had been in conflict with the Han since the founding of the Han and the Han Empire eventually defeated the Xiongnu and chased them off into the steppes. But the Xiongnu cavalry in game comes in two varieties. There is the regular cavalry, which we see here. Decent charge, shot cavalry, has a shield, so they resemble J dragons, which I have in the back. They have 45% range block chance from the shield. And in all honesty, the unit that we should be comparing these guys to is actually not J-Dragons, but rather the Yellow Turban Shot Cavalries that we seen a couple days ago in the Yellow Turban tier list, because they have the same exact setup with a 45% range block chance, but since we have a roster of 6 generals, and you can just cross-reference that, it's really not necessary to pull another Yellow Turban General in here for comparison. Uh, but in terms of the weapon choice between these and the J Dragons, J Dragons are better versions of these units, higher damage as well as higher range block chance and higher charge as well, even though it's kind of barely higher charge. Then the upgraded version is actually quite an upgrade, because they're not just called heavy Xiongnu cavalry, they're actually called Xiongnu cataphracts, and they resemble cataphract with their high armor, 53%. They also have a shield, which you cannot say on Cataphract units. Therefore, they could even be better than Cataphract. And honestly, 
they probably are better than cataphracts and you have access to them way earlier compared to cataphracts you don't have to go down the reform tree they have a similar armor and speed so they cause about the same shock damage charge damage is obviously pretty good with the melee charge bonus but the spear weapons the same as these the shield is the same as these so there's no major differences there it's just the unit himself is wearing more armor and the horses themselves are wearing more armor and if you compare these two jade dragons the armor portion becomes very similar they're higher speed which is excellent jade dragon is a bit slower which is unfortunate and in terms of charge they're actually slightly higher so Xiongnu Cavalry is actually a very good unit in the game. You have the speed and the mass of a cataphract unit while having a shield that's similar to Jade Dragons. A little bit less range block chance, but every little bit helps. So that's going to wrap it up for all the unique units that we're going to see in 8 Princes. And we're going to pop back into the tier list to rank all of them. So let's hop back in. Alrighty, so after seeing all 18 of these units, we're going to be ranking them all now. But before we get into that, please remember that this tier list is a reflection of my personal opinions based on my experience playing single player romance campaigns on Legendary Difficulty, and all figures and stats that you have just seen are shown on large unit size on patch 1.6.1. So if you happen to be watching in the future or are playing on a different unit size, just please adjust accordingly. Now, starting things off, we're going to go with the doll units as they are not faction unique, they're a bit easier to compare. The Doll Infantry or the Doll Sword Guard is a terrible unit. It's way more expensive compared to the Saber counterpart or less stats. You're pretty much paying about 15% more upkeep, but you lose around 25% of your charge and you lose 15% of your defense. And if you're utilizing these units, these shielded melee infantry unit, you want them to be a frontline unit. You're not using these for ambushes. You have better units for ambushes. Therefore, you're paying a lot for some sustained damage output when in fact you need more defense. And in the case that you want them to be ambush units for some reason, you want the higher charge. So since they're worse than a cheaper counterpart, they're gonna get the D tier to kick off this list. Then what we have here is a true infantry. So True Infantry, once again, is Sima Wei's unit. This is a slightly better version of what we've seen in Yuan Shu's special unit, but that is not saying very much. These are very expensive. They have higher charge than Saber Infantry, but in terms of damage, they're pretty much clones of the unit we just ranked D, and they don't have shield, and they cost way more than a dull sword guard. So they're going to go right behind that unit and go into D as well. Then we have a very good unit in the Xu Raiders. The Xu Raiders are Sima Yue's unit. They are these axe infantry that are mini yellow dragons is how I would like to refer to them because they pretty much have the high charge. They have excellent shield, uses an axe, same exact damage setting as a yellow dragon, requires no reform. So if you really like the Yellow Dragon unit and you have the Eight Princes, try out Sima Yue. And historically, he's the ultimate winner as well. So you'll be playing a historical campaign, even though he's definitely not a good guy in my book. And these units will get an S tier ranking. Then moving on, their heavier counterpart is more shielded in terms of armor. And the shield quality also goes way up by getting you 10% more range block chance, but we mentioned that 10% more range block chance actually ruins your shield wall formation because it actually push you to 100%. Now, there are cases when that might be more useful, where you might use this as a turtle replacement, but you have to face them perfectly perpendicular and in front of enemy towers to make sure you're not actually getting shot with the arrows to the side. But they're still excellent units, I will drop them lower than the Sioux Raiders because they cost more, require more rank, and they lost some charge bonus because they have more armor and they're slower. So I think what we're going to do with this unit is move it down to A tier. Then we have Sima Liang's Imperial Guard unit. And Sima Liang's Imperial Guard unit is the precursor to all the Imperial units that we see in game. 
unfortunately, it doesn't have as good a stat as the ones we have. Lower charge by a ton. I think it's 80 something to 200 something. So big difference. Lower evasion, same armor, I believe. Damage is also a little lower. And it doesn't have the solidarity buff where if you have two units, you get extra bonuses. So it definitely loses out in a lot of areas. But Imperial units are not available in Eight Princess. So it's not actually competing in the same arena. So I shouldn't hold it back. It is still very expensive, but it is a high quality infantry that can work on the front line. And you still have access to Turtle, which makes you quite nice. So if we balance in the cost and the lower stats, I think it still deserves A. Because in the realm of Eight Princes, when these units will be even playable, there's still quite a strong unit to utilize. And then we have three units that belong to Sima Ying, and they're the Tiang units. And we rated these before in the Faction Unique unit when we rated Ma Tong's unit. And they're simply S tier. There is nothing holding these units back. They're fatigue immune. They are top of the line. The range units have 250 range, tons of ammo, tons of firing rate, never get tired. Shock cavalry have decent charge. Melee cavalry have amazing charge for melee cavalry, have the same defensive bonus. All three are available on all classes. All three are available quite early in the game. They are simply very, very strong units to utilize. Then we have a terrible unit to talk about. This is the Dull Sword Guard Cavalry. We already threw the infantry counterpart into D. But these are not as bad. They only cost 10 extra upkeep compared to the Saber counterpart, and they do have better damage as well as better defense. They do lose out on charge, but if you're utilizing these as arrow sponges, the extra defense would help you out. They have 85% range block chance with nobility skill, so they'll do excellent in that arena. And they still have decent enough charge that you can use them to kill off some weak units in the back line. So I think for melee cavalry, they do the trick and they're going to get the C rank here. Then moving on, we have the Xiongnu Cavalry. These belong to Sima Lun and they are these shielded mini J dragons that are slightly weaker than J dragons. And then the cataphract unit is a cataphract unit that's stronger than regular cataphract unit. So that's going to both affect their ranking. I think for the regular version, these guys have very good charge. They're weak in D terms of defense. They have a 45% shield. They are probably going to end up getting a A tier here. They can't really compete with the fatigue immune units here that belongs to the Tiang, but they're pretty special for a Jock Cavalry. So I think they do deserve an A tier. And the Cataphract is kind of in between A and S in my mind. And I think in the end, I think they will stick in A tier. I don't think they're S tier because J Dragons are available during Eight Princes. You can actually recruit those units and you have Cataphract as well. So they're kind of an in-betweener that costs a little bit extra. So maybe you just pay up the small difference to get J Dragons, which has better stats overall. Or you can save a little money and just get regular Cataphract, which will do what you want. From a shot cavalry without worrying about the range component because let's be honest 45 percent range block chance on shot cavalry doesn't actually save you from archers you're not charging these guys directly into enemy fire you still be babying these guys the 40 percent helps but it's not going to be a game changer then we have Sembei riders and Sembei horse archers these are sima yong's unit and these are fatigue resistant lance cavalry unit and fatigue resistant mounted archer units. And that's gonna really affect their ranking as well. So because the counterparts exist, and in terms of the Sanbei horse archers, they have five points of morale, that's their advantage, and fatigue resistance. Now fatigue resistance is good. They're gonna cost more, and they're gonna be available on all classes, but really you're only gonna recruit these guys on either Vanguard for speed or most likely a strategist for the cunning. So the flexibility is not that great because I think the regular horse archers are available on strategists and commanders, and both of them can utilize them quite well. But still, I think we rated horse archers pretty high so the clone is not going to drop too much either. 
I think we're going to put them as A tier as well. They're useful units and fatigue resistant is definitely a slight improvement. Not as good as fatigue immune, but it's getting there. Then for the Lance Cavalry replacement, I don't think they're that impressive, but then again, they're not terrible. So I think they're not D tier. They're probably just going to be C. You can definitely still utilize these in your campaign. They have good stat ratios and you can get them way earlier than Lance Cavalry. But for the early game, you're probably going to still stick to Lancer Militias. And then once you get to the late game, I don't know. I think Cataphract units from this period compete with these guys simply because you might just want the heavier mass and armor of those units for charging. And these lighter shot cavalries, which really is kind of close to Lancer Militias, is not going to be a big selling point in terms of what you upgrade your shock cavalries into. And then we have a couple of range units. So starting things off, we have the T crossbowmen. These guys are better versions of the heavy crossbow because of the attack rate boost. And that's actually pretty huge. So crossbows are always strong units given their armor piercing damage. They have decent ammo. You get these before reforms from, well actually the rank up is needed for the heavy crossbowmen so i think damage wise they are improvements over the regular crossbow you get these about the same time you would you can get them on any class they're good units i think they might actually be a tier here i think you would definitely recruit these in your armies you could use them as your main range units the range on them is not terrible either 220 is respectable and no fire is definitely a penalty, but you can probably work around that with some siege weapons. I think these are a decent unit. I think they deserve to be A. And for the same thing, archers of Jin definitely deserve to be A as well. They have the fire arrows. They have a little bit less range. 200 is not that great, but they can fire on the run. They match up perfectly with the E marksman, which I think is an excellent unit. And you get these at rank 3. And for those of you who have not played Eight Princes, there is a very neat alignment system where your ammo count just goes crazy. You can get hundreds of ammos on your range units. And I think that really plays into the vantage here. You can use these guys to flank very easily because they can fire on the move. And I think they're going to be quite useful as they do have a decent sized amount of armor as well. Then we have the Infantry of Jin, also a pretty great unit. Uh, we've seen how spear guards are mainstays of most armies. So these as improved versions of the spear guards are definitely mainstays of armies as well. And I can see these guys replace the heavy spear guards. You don't actually have to go with heavy spear guards. You can use these for the entire campaign. Therefore, I think they deserve an S tier here. Then we're left with two very shieldless poem units that's hard to rank at all times because of the vulnerability to range the first guy here is the true spearman these are the heavily armored version of the spear warrior they are 50 percent more expensive compared to a spear warrior and the only bonus you get on them is 20 percent extra armor and that's it so i think it's pretty clear these guys are D tier because if you're playing as the faction with these units, Sima Wei, you're better off just paying for a lot of spear warriors. If you're about to send your infantry charging into the enemy, you get the exact same stat and I think slightly higher charge too, and you pay way less. You can get three spear warrior for the price of two of these. Then we have another unit. This is the T guardsman. This is a D unit. The replacement unit for this is the Heavy D Infantry. And I think this unit has a place in the game. It's not a very clear place, but I think it has a place in the game. And I think we're going to make it a C tier, which leaves the B tier empty, which I'm okay with. I think if there's anything that we want to drop to B tier from the A tier, nothing's going up. These guys are all not as good. The only reason why they went up is because they're available on all units. You can get them way earlier than Heavy D Infantry. And Heavy D Infantry is actually a decent unit in the game. Of course, they're weak against range, but you can use them on the flank. 
before you get protector of heavens they would be like the best option on the flank you might just get like a few spear guards in the front to tank up arrows these guys on the side would do way better than spear guards in terms of damage output but we don't have anyone in b and is that a problem well i don't think so i think i'm pretty happy with the s tier you have a god tier frontline unit you have a mini yellow dragon three town units those are always s tier I think the only unit we might drop might be the Imperial Guard because you're paying a lot for not a lot of stats um, but you do get these quite early and they're pretty unbeatable in melee. These guys are pretty strong too. I think I'm okay with it. I don't think anything is really B or average. Most of these units are faction unique unit so most of these are pretty good units and in terms of what's bad it's basically way better replacement options that are cheaper or units just really don't have a role here because they don't have a shield and that's going to sum it up for our eight princes tier list many of these units as well as all the units we cover for the han for the yellow turbans for the nine factions will return together in the bandit tier list it's going to be a very chaotic conclusion to our unit tier list because bandits have access to so many units because they have access to the bandit network so they can borrow units from all over the place hope you guys enjoy this one and hope you guys will come back for the bandit tier list to conclude all our unit tier lists on the channel and see you guys then bye